Here we're going to discuss the general mechanism of electrophilic aromatic substitution after the active electrophile E plus has been generated. There's a two-step mechanism here that is universal for electrophilic aromatic substitutions that we'll see in this course. In the first step, the electrophile coordinates to or associates with a carbon in the benzene ring. And the curved arrows for this look like this. A pair of pi electrons in benzene heads toward the electrophile, and we get a new carbon E bond. And we would label this an A sub E step. It's association of an electrophile to a pi system using a pair of pi electrons as the nucleophile. Now, some things to note about this species that we've just generated through this electron flow. First of all, it's non-aromatic. We know that because, hey, there's a tetrahedral center in the ring now. It's no longer fully conjugated. This is a non-aromatic intermediate, indicating it's much, much higher in energy than the starting aromatic benzene. This means that this first step on a reaction coordinate diagram is going to be way, way, way uphill. And it's the rate determining or the slow step of electrophilic aromatic substitutions. Universally, this first step is the slow step of the two. This species has positive charge within it, and that charge is delocalized. This species has a number of different resonance forms. We can generate those, for example, by shifting the pi electrons around, taking this pi bond, shifting it over here. That's going to move positive charge there, and now we have a new pi bond right there. And we can do something similar here, take this pair of electrons, send them into a new pi bond. That shifts positive charge two carbons over to this position. So the positive charge is delocalized over this, I guess, five atom conjugated system, right? Five atom pi system right here. Because of the positive charge and because it resembles an aromatic, this is known as an arenium ion, this type of intermediate with positive charge in the ring, complete conjugation except for that pesky tetrahedral center is known as an arenium ion. And it's point two on the reaction coordinate diagram. It's a high energy intermediate in EAS reactions. Now, that arenium ion has cationic character at these three positions, but a nucleophile does not attack at those positions. If one did, that would produce another saturated carbon, say right here, ortho to E, and we wouldn't restore aromaticity in that case, right? We'd have two saturated carbons within the ring and two double bonds. That's a conjugated diene, but not an aromatic by any means. Instead of that, the next step involves restoration of aromaticity by deprotonating the arenium ion. And the deprotonation, this is an important point, occurs at the same position that the electrophile added. This hydrogen linked to the saturated carbon is the one that's deprotonated. That's why I think it's helpful to draw in the implied hydrogen at the reactive carbon in EAS reactions. It's going to help you remember that this is the hydrogen that is removed when deprotonation takes place. And this is step two of the prototypical mechanism. So some base comes along, and the exact base is going to depend on the reaction conditions. If we're using, for example, sulfuric acid, which comes in an aqueous solution, this might be water, H2O, some base is going to remove that proton, and the pair of electrons in the CH bond become a new pi bond between the saturated carbon and the ortho cationic position. And this reestablishes aromaticity. And it's heavily, heavily downhill. So if you think of the products as Roman numeral three, that's going to be way, way downhill to get to the final products here. And here I've just kind of crossed out H plus and written HB plus to remind us that a base does need to remove that proton. It's not going to just float freely in solution. It needs a base to remove it. A base as weak as water can do this. To summarize, this is the prototypical mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution after generation of the active electrophile. Association of that electrophile to the aromatic pi system, we call that A sub E, followed by a proton transfer, specifically loss of a proton from the same carbon that picked up the new bond to E. Notice that hydrogen that is deprotonated is linked to the same carbon that picked up the bond to E. And this restores aromaticity, gives us the E substituted benzene product, and releases HB plus the conjugate acid of the base. This slide is a reminder of those five key active electrophiles in EAS reactions with a few more details. So I've gone ahead and drawn out detailed Lewis structures for each of these with everything but lone pairs in most cases. In the first case, we end up with a halogen coordinated to 
this wonky thing. Ultimately, this Lewis acid we're going to use, FeBr3, FeCl3, or AlCl3 are the most common in these reactions, coordinates to the halogen and renders this hanging X atom extremely electrophilic. In nitrations, we're going to generate the NO2 cation, whose Lewis structure is right here. This helps drive home the point that it's analogous to CO2, just with an extra proton. The SO3H cation, one way of drawing that Lewis structure is right here, and this is extremely electrophilic at the sulfur atom. R plus in friedel crafts alkylation is just a trigonal carbocation, and the acylium ion is also a species containing cationic carbon, but it's resonance stabilized. Notice, positive charge is shared in these resonance forms between O and C, and that gives the acylium ion some unique properties and some good behavior, shall we say, <laughs> relative to the carbocation. friedel crafts alkylation is very rarely used in practice because, as we'll see very shortly, acylation followed by reduction of the carbonyl group that shows up in the product of friedel crafts acylation is a much better route to alkyl-substituted benzenes in many, many cases.